Okay, this is an autonomous uh, underwater vehicle. Uh, it's a Slocum glider, uh, and we've been deploying this in the Gulf of Maine, uh, looking at essentially long-term change uh, in the Gulf of Maine, a coastal, important coastal area with lots of fisheries. Uh, and we, it's part of a time series, which has been funded by NASA, uh, looking at long-term change as well as doing parallel measurements, in-water measurements, made at the same time as ocean color satellites are going over. Uh, it's really important in order to understand the signals that you're seeing from space uh, to actually have instrumentation in the water at the same time uh, that the satellites go over. So Henry, as he's affectionately known, named after Henry Bigelow, uh, the uh, laboratory's namesake, uh, is outfitted uh, with optical sensors, a whole suite of optical sensors, as well as sensors to measure temperature and salinity, uh, which are important for understanding the physical oceanography. Uh, and these light sensors essentially allow us to measure uh, reflectance that would be observed by a satellite at lots, at a number of different colors of light, uh, as well as Henry has sensors underneath uh, which are designed to measure the amount of chlorophyll, the, the uh, pigment that's in microscopic phytoplankton, on, uh, which allow the plants to uh, photosynthesize and fix light. Their phytoplankton are the, the bottom of the marine food web uh, on which all life in the sea depends. So understanding the, how they vary in space and time is really important for us to understand uh, long-term change and what's it, what its impacts are going to be. And what separates this kind of a device from the array of buoys we have out there? Well, this uh, essentially, uh, you know, is, as technology has gotten better and better, um, you still have to send people out on ships to do work. There, there's no getting around it. However, we send this glider out for 24, 26 days at a time uh, to cross the entire Gulf of Maine, and uh, he surfaces every six hours. It's like having a, a, a Martian, uh, a, a Mars rover, uh, essentially, uh, uh, in which we can program it to go to specific areas. Uh, it's autonomous, but it's communicating where it is. It has GPS, it has compass, it dead reckons, uh, and it essentially takes data for us uh, and we don't have to have a ship out at the same time, and the Gulf of Maine can be a very rough, inclement area. And uh, so there are times, frankly, we couldn't be out in a ship making these sorts of measurements. But the glider basically can be on site for almost a month at a time, which is, which is uh, really remarkable. Is it also significant that, we're seeing, that you can actually see a whole linear swath of the Gulf versus buoys here or a ship sure. out here and sure so the glider what makes what really separates the glider from uh, free drifting buoys is that we can target a specific area of the ocean we can cover a transect uh, in which we're looking specifically at interesting ocean areas uh, areas that we need to collect more data whereas a buoy that's drifting essentially is going to be at the whimsy of the strong tidal currents and the winds and uh, uh, so so this is allows us to be much more targeted in what we're looking at uh, in the ocean